Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome back to Enemy AI inside of Unity. This is part 2 or part B, I haven't decided yet, in the 2D platformer course under AI. And uh, today we are going to be uh, using the navigation mesh that we set up in the last video to get something moving inside of a scene. So as you can see, I'm here back in uh, Unity and uh, I've, I have my A star uh, pathfinding object right here where we set up a grid graph that looks like this. But this graph is pretty boring if we have nothing that can actually move inside it. So this uh, uh, video here is going to be pretty scripting heavy. Uh, so if you have a hard time following along or just want to skip ahead, what you can do is you can simply um, uh, download the 2D assets pack available at brackies.com to get the final script. We have sprites and scripts and audio and GUI elements and all kinds of cool stuff inside of this pack. Cool, so let's get started with the video. So what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, go under the 2D assets pack, then under sprites, under 2D platformer, and we're going to import my symbol alien spaceship here. The reason why there's so much empty space is because I've made some room if we want to, uh, say, make variations inside of the same sprite sheet, or if we wanted to make animations. Now let's drag this inside of Unity, and let's set it up. So we're going to set the sprite mode to multiple, we're going to change the pixels per unit to, let's try 10. And the filter mode, we're going to set to point. Now go into the sprite editor, and we're going to simply slice automatically here. And it's going to slice it up pretty fine. Now we can hit apply, and we can exit out of the sprite editor. And it should have applied our import settings by now. If not, hit apply. Cool, now we can uh, open this up, and we can see that we have our enemy, which can simply be dragged into the scene. So I'm going to head back into 2D mode, zoom in a bit, and drag him in here. I think his size is pretty fine, maybe a bit too large uh, for our current needs. This is going to be a pretty small enemy, I think. We can maybe compare his size to our player, so if we go under Sprites, and select the Astronaut Sprite Sheet, there, uh, those pixels per unit are set to 18. So I think I'm going to set, uh, try at least setting the enemy to the same here. Hmm, that's too small. I think we're going to do something like 13, and we're going to leave it at that for now. Then I'm also going to drag this alien spaceship under the sprites folder. Cool. So our alien spaceship, we are simply going to name this, uh, rename this uh, without the... Uh, underscore O. And uh, what we are going to do is hit add component and we are going to add uh, another pi pathfinding script. This is also included with the A star pathfinding project. So again, you will need A star. So if you haven't watched the previous video, you should go ahead and do that now. So go under pathfinding and we're going to find this seeker. Any AI you do inside of A star pathfinding is going to need the seeker component attached to it. But we're not going to be messing around with any settings, so we can simply collapse this. Then let's hit add component and we're going to add a rigid body 2D. There are many ways of, of actually moving your character. I mean, A star takes uh, care of all of the um, pathfinding in that it's going to know where you want your character to move, but it's not going to actually move your character. So a simple way to do that is using the rigid body 2D component provided by Unity. You could also use some kind of custom made character controller or maybe find a plugin on the asset store. But a simple and, and pretty nice way is using the built in physics. So let's hit the rigid body 2D add component. And uh, the mass we are going to leave at 1. And we are going to mess around with a few of the other settings uh, later. But first off, I just want to set the gravity scale to 0 so he doesn't fall down as soon as we try playtesting. Now let's hit Add Component. Let's create a new script. Let's call this Enemy AI. Um, you might want to be more specific if you want more enemies. But I think I'm just going to create this huge master script that 
does it all basically. So let's hit create an ad. And uh, this guy here is going to be relatively simple to start out with. He's simply going to be uh, kind of behaving like a, a zombie would in that he will just find the nearest path to us and then just fly over there. And that's it. And when he reaches um, our destination, um, we might make him stop at some point. I don't know how much time we are going to have in this tutorial. So we'll see about that. But we, we are definitely going to make him uh, follow us. So let's double click this enemy AI. And then maybe we can make him shoot uh, and all that stuff later. And uh, I'm just going to zoom in here. And what we want to do is get rid of this using system dot collection that is pretty rarely used actually. I, I hate the fact that it it imports it automatically. And then instead we're going to say using pathfinding. And this basically is the link between our script right here and the A star pathfinding projects uh, AI engine. So this right here will import A star pathfinding. Uh, the namespace into our project so we can access uh, the classes that we need in order to create nice pathfinding. Then we're going to delete the uh, starter methods and we're going to start out by requiring some components just to make sure that we don't add this to a game object that doesn't have a rigid body and a seeker. So we're going to type require component type of rigid body 2D and we can simply duplicate this down here and so for rigid body 2D we are going to write seeker. Then inside of the mono behavior class we are going to write uh, or the enemy AI class we're going to write public transform we want this to show up in the inspector so we can assign it and we're going to call this target. Then next up we are going to have a public load which we are going to call update delay and uh, we're going to default this to about one actually let's just call this update rate and we're going to set this to maybe two times a second that's better uh, i like the rate better than the delay that just confuses people that you have to do smaller values to get it high and all that we're simply going to divide this number uh, Never mind that, <laughs> we're going to continue. We're going to need two private variables. The first one is going to be uh, our seeker, uh, which we are going to reference, and we're simply going to call that seeker. And the other one is going to be our 2D rigid body, so we're simply going to call that RB. Uh, it's pretty common in the forums to call it RB, so I'm going to stick to that naming convention. Then we are going to store a reference to the, uh, or store the calculated path. public path path and also we are going to uh, have the AI's speed and this is going to be per second so it's not frame rate dependent and it's going to be a public float and we're going to call it speed and we're going to default it to maybe 300 then we're going to have a public force mode 2d and we're simply going to call this if mode. And uh, basic, basically what a force mode is, um, is, is just a way to change between uh, force and impulse. Uh, so it's just a way to control the way that force is applied to our uh, rigid body. And uh, it just gives us some control in the editor uh, as to how we want our enemy to behave. So it's, it's a very simple enum uh, that we can just... Uh, change between in the inspector. Then next up we're going to want a private bool uh, that is going to tell us whether or not our path is ended. And actually I want this to be public because then we can access it later if we want like to see if our um, if our uh, AI is moving or if it's currently searching for something. Um, and we're going to set it to false. Um, but I don't want it to show up in the inspector. Oops, public, bool. So right before I'm going to do these square brackets and inside of those I'm going to type hide in inspector and that will make sure that it's public but it won't show up in the inspector. 
pretty cool. Next up is our uh, max distance from the AI to a waypoint for it to continue to the next waypoint. So uh, we're gonna call this, uh, we're gonna store it in a public float and we're gonna call it next waypoint distance. We're gonna set it to equal to three. So this is basically how close do we need to get to a waypoint before it says, okay, we've reached that point and it can continue on. So the max distance from the AI to a waypoint for it to continue to the next waypoint. <laughs> cool. Um, I'm simply going to do caching up here and this is going to be um, how many times a second each uh, second we will update our path. Uh, we simply want to do this a limited number of times just so we don't clutter the computer unnecessarily. And this is of course going to be what to chase. And uh, we're almost done with creating variables here. I know it's quite a lot and it, it probably looks uh, scary, but um, but it, it really isn't. I will, I will walk slowly through this uh, and hopefully uh, you will follow along. If not, it's completely understandable. AI is something that f frightens many developers and uh, frankly, it's, it's, it's a job that has tried to be made intuitive over the years and uh, I think that now we've reached a point where there are many good solutions um, to AI but it's still it's still it's still a whole category that you have to get in the mindset of uh, this waypoint thing and pathfinding and uh, one node connects to the other and all that so please bear with me here it might be confusing in the beginning so I think we're just going to skip the rest of the variables and then expand on to this later. This is basically the core of what we're going to need and uh, this should be work really nicely. So what we want to do here is create a start method. So let's type void start and inside of this met method we are going to first off assign our seeker. So we're simply going to say seeker equals get component of type seeker. And then we will assign our rigid body. So RB equals get component of type rigid body 2D. Oops. Capital R there, or it's gonna try and access our local rigid body, which we don't want. Then we're gonna check if our target is equal to null. So if we haven't assigned a target, I think we're simply gonna debug.log. We can input some kind of uh, target searching here uh, and we are going to do that later. Uh, so if we doesn't, don't have a target, we're going to search for one. But for now, we're simply going to make it spit out an error and, and the world will burn. <laughs> so we're going to say no player found. Panic. And uh, then we're going to return there. And uh, down here. Then we can use our target and uh, we're going to say that uh, seeker, we are then going to access the start path method and this is part of the A star um, project and uh, this is going to take a, a few parameters. First off is the uh, our current, current position which is transform dot position and uh, that's our start point. And then we're going to put in our target position, um, which is target dot position. And uh, then we are going to put in on path complete. And what this will do here, I'm going to write it out as a comment, is start a new path to the target position and return the result to the on path complete function method. I'm gonna call it a method. And uh, this might be weird, the fact that we are inputting a function as an argument, and I get why, but it's actually very, very useful 
in this case. So I'm going to write some more here. Write some more. I'm not done with this method. I'm just going to remind myself. And then I'm quickly going to show you what we can do with this. So what we can do is we can make a, a function here, which is going to be public, I think. Uh, we're going to uh, of type void. And we are going to call it on path complete. We could have called it anything we liked, um, as long as we changed it up here also. And as an argument, we're going to take path, and we're simply going to short this with p. And this is pretty much the hardest part of this. Um, inside of this, we are simply going to uh, maybe debug.log. Um, we got a path. Uh, did it have an error and then we can put in p dot error then down here we can say if we didn't have an error so if not p dot error it's just a bool uh, then we can oops then we can say that path equals p and we can set our current waypoint to zero. Whoops, haven't I created the current waypoint variable? Whoops, no, I skipped one. So uh, here, private, this is going to be private, int, oh, yes, int, uh, current waypoint, excuse me here, I, I just confused myself. Uh, way too much. Uh, this is what's not necessary, but I'll explain in a sec. Um, so, and we are the uh, description for this is simply the uh, waypoint we are currently moving towards. And this is referenced uh, with an index, that's why it's an integer. So, <clears throat> sorry here. Okay, so what we're doing here is we are saying that it should start a path. And it should start it from uh, our uh, current position to the target position. And uh, when it's um, done creating this path, it's going to call the onPathComplete function. This is down here. It's going to put in the path that it's just made. Then we check and write out uh, a log saying if it had an error. So uh, this p dot error is basically just a way to check if our path was successful. And if it didn't have a, a, an error, so if it, it found a correct path, we're going to set our current path to the path that it found. So we're going to uh, simply update our uh, calculated path up here. And we're going to set the way, uh, our current waypoint to zero. So the waypoint that we will start at uh, on this path is simply going to be zero, so that we don't start in the, in the middle of the path or at the end. If that makes any sense, awesome. If not, bear with me, uh, we'll continue here.